Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. My name is Troy and today we are continuing the Forza Horizon 5 Rally series. <laughs> So in the last episode, if you missed it, we took the Lamborghini Huracan down the rally course and it ended up being our fastest vehicle yet. So if you missed that episode, go and check it out after this one. But today I thought we would build the Ford Puma. Uh, we have a Ford up there in fourth place, the Ford Focus RS from the first episode. And right behind that we have the Bronco R as well. So let's see if we can maybe beat those vehicles. If you've not seen any of these episodes before, then basically all the vehicles we build in the series are built to S1 class. They all have to keep their stock drivetrain and they all are fitted with rally tires. If the PI allows it, then they'll keep their stock engine. If we need a bit of extra PI, then we can go ahead and upgrade the engine i know that we're going to have to do that in the puma so we start off with the stock engine i don't actually know what engine are in these as stock but we start off with 153 horsepower we can go for a turbo rally engine or we can go for the two liter turbo rally engine um I'm not really sure what's the best option uh, I think we'll go for the 2 litre turbo, that sounds like a good option, I think more torque is going to be good up the hill. Now this thing is front wheel drive, I believe we've only had one other front wheel drive vehicle so far, which was the Volvo 850R, so if we beat the Volvo then I will be happy about that. Um, so we're not going to convert the drivetrain. Uh, let's have a little look at some of the uh, body modifications we can do. Obviously, we want as much ground clearance as possible, so fitting splitters and things which would help with aerodynamics on the road are not necessarily a good idea when we go off-road, so we're going to leave that. We can fit the Ford wing if we want to, or we can go for some Forza Aero. Um, we're not going to bother with either of those. Skirt options, we can go for some mud some of those and we can get some big rally fog lights on the front why not uh, it does look a bit weird without a spoiler it has that weird little lip spoiler but i know this thing can be a very good rally car so let's see what else have we got in here of course we have to go for the off-road tire compound previously known as the rally tire compound if you played horizon 4 we're going to go for the widest tires we can possibly get what can we get on this 225 so not massive but pretty decent it is a very lightweight little hatchback we're going to go for full clutch options we're going to fit the race transmission carbon fiber drive shaft and of course rally differential so we can go ahead and tune this thing in a minute we're going to upgrade the brakes to full we're going to go for race brakes and that will lighten the vehicle as well uh, we're going to go for off-road springs and dampers. I'm not going to body, bother sorry, with the anti-roll bars. And we're going to go for full weight reduction. Uh, that is going to reduce quite a bit of weight. Almost 400 pounds. So that is good. And then we're going to go and fully upgrade the engine. Hopefully we can just get this thing up into S1 class. Otherwise we might have to go with the turbo rally engine but well, let's have a quick look it definitely sounds more like a rally car now um we can fully upgrade that we can go for anti-lag that was introduced halfway through making this series um so that was added quite a few months ago but i started the series when anti-lag wasn't a thing so we're not going to be fitting the vehicle with anti-lag, but we can fit it with a race turbo because it wouldn't be fair on the vehicles we've already tested. And we can go ahead and reduce the flywheel. 
that's going to shave off a few more extra pounds and there we go that is the vehicle just into s1 class but that's all right that is what the vehicle requires let's oops let's have a quick look at our statistics we've got 500 horsepower going to the front wheels and 450 foot pound of torque we weigh just over a ton 2300 pounds and we've got a 2.3 litre turbo inline four cylinder so we've got all the makings of a rally car we've got those rally wheels on there and some off-road springs and dampers i'm going to go ahead and tune this thing and paint it with a cool vinyl livery and i'll see you guys at the rally course all right our first pass in the little puma here i've just tested this thing uh, very quickly and it does like to spin the tires quite a lot like the Volvo did of course front wheel drive and steering is going to be a little bit of a handful but we'll see how we do on the first couple of laps it is wanting to torque steer quite a bit we've got a bit of a wiggle going on we're going to keep to the right hand side of the water splashes whoa we're very wide there we're in the trees almost i'm gonna keep it quite high geared i'm not expecting this thing to be the fastest car we've ever had if i was building this for a proper online racing series i would fit it with all-wheel drive but let's see how this thing does with front wheel drive it is actually drifting through quite a lot of these corners we're getting a bit of oversteer going and a lot of understeer it's all over the road i'm having to counter steer it quite a lot but that's okay it looks great with this livery and the mud flaps going on coming into the hairpin i'm not going to uh i'm not going to give it too much throttle because i don't want to understeer we are just spinning the wheels quite a lot. Now let's see what kind of power we can get down on. Whoa, up the hill. I'm having to counter steer it like mad and really drive with the throttle. And that is the only way to control this thing. We pressed at 105, so that's not the fastest car we had. Hurricane in the last episode is up to 130 up there, but not the slowest. Definitely feels faster than the Volvo. Now, at this corner here, we're just going to coast it through there. And actually, that was very controlled through there. Six gear is helping quite a lot. I'm coasting through most of the corners because the second you go through the throttle, um, the second you touch the throttle, sorry. It is all over the road, as you can see. This has not been the prettiest lap, but this is definitely just to see what the car can do and see how we get on. We cross the line at a 227, which is actually slower than the Volvo's final time. But now I know how the vehicle drives, how it wants to behave. We can start chipping away at that time a little bit there. So let's see if we can at least beat the Volvo's time. I will be happy. Um, if we can get it up the leaderboard a little bit more, more than that, then I will be overjoyed. But it is definitely not going to be anywhere near our top 10 even. Uh, but let's see what we do in the next couple of attempts. All right, round number two. Here we go in the Ford Puma. I'm just going to go straight up to second gear. And we're at about half throttle. It is spinning the wheels like mad. What I've learned is you don't want to touch the throttle when you're coming through a corner. So down the straight here, I can be flat with the throttle. But as soon as we get into a corner like this, you just want to coast through the corner. And if the corner straightens up, then you can get the power on. So that was a lot more controlled through there. We're going to keep it to the right hand side of the water splash there. We're much better through here this time. We're not in the trees, but don't miss the checkpoint. That was very, very close. Up the hill here and into another corner. I'm just going to coast it through here. I'm just going to keep the power there, ready to deploy as soon as we hit a straight section. We're actually getting a bit of oversteer through there, but then when I try and correct it, I'm 
use a bit of throttle it's pulling the front end round and we are understeering so it is a very tricky little car to control obviously it's very short as well short wheelbase cars off-road is usually a bad combination coming up to the hairpin I turned in a little bit early there because I don't really know where this car is going to go down the straight we're spinning the wheels a little bit we don't get any air on the jump some vehicles do into these couple of corners here we're just going to use about a quarter of the throttle and then we can use all of the power up the hill here to drag the car up we're a little bit faster up the hill there this time this definitely feels like a quicker lap time i don't know how much we're going to shave off but we'll have to wait and see we're a bit wide in the trees there that's going to cost us a few tents i think it was very controlled through here last time and it is this time as well a little bit of a brush on the bushes on the exit but that's all right into the last couple of corners this is where it was just wiggling around everywhere last time and it is again but we do oh, we are in the fence it just i don't know where the vehicle wants to go through there i'm trying to counter steer it but it has a mind of its own but coming down the hill we are faster than we were last time and we have beaten the volvo 850r with a 223 0.043 that was a much better lap time but it was still all over the road we hit the fence towards the end coming down the hill which will of course cost us a bit of time so i think we could maybe get this thing to a 220 with a bit of control not hitting the fence and maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit less power in the corners but let's see what we do on the final attempt all right here we go this is our final attempt i'm going to go straight up to second gear we're spinning the tires i'm using about half the throttle it doesn't get a launch as good as the hurricane but of course we are only driving two of the wheels instead of all of them Coming down here, we need to be early on the brakes. We nearly go into the fence at the end, so that's going to cost us a little bit. The problem is with this vehicle is I can't deploy all of the power because it does just spin those wheels. So I'm only using about half the throttle, which means we're only using about half of the 500 horsepower available. 540, I should say. We're a little bit more controlled through these corners here. Again, only using about a third or about a half of the throttle. And then when we get on a straight here, I can get it up the gears and deploy full power. We're a little bit wide through there, but I don't know what the car wants to do. It really has a mind of its own. I'm all over the road, but half of that is the car misbehaving i'm doing my best to try and counter steer it and predict where it might go but you really just can't we're not spinning the tires as much this time down the straight there this looks like a smoother lap time but i don't know whether it'll be faster it doesn't feel that quick but you never know smoothness can be quicker up the hill here we're cresting at 110 which is pretty good We're not in the bushes this time. If I do go quiet, I apologize. It's just because I'm really trying to concentrate with this thing. It's not an easy vehicle to drive. The Huracan was very flattering. It made you feel like you did it, but really it was a very easy car to drive. This thing has a mind of its own. Now let's not brush the fence this time. I'm gonna turn it in early. It, it dove for the fence. That wasn't me turning, that was the car doing its own thing. Coming down the hill, it's a lot, lot better. It's a big, big improvement there. A 218.873. That is a massive improvement from our first run. Almost 10 seconds faster than the first run. So it turns out smoothness is quicker. But let's have a look how the Ford Puma racks up against some of our other vehicles. 
Well, there we have it. It's a 19th place for the Ford Racing Puma, a 218.873. That's going to put it in 18th place, just behind the Ford GT70 and the Lancia 037, but just in front of the rear-wheel drive Volkswagen Beetle, I think the Beetle was definitely more controllable than this thing, although not very much. It really just had a mind of its own. I couldn't predict where the thing was going to go. And every time you went near the throttle, it just wanted to counter steer you into a tree. So would I recommend the Ford Racing Puma as a rally car? 100%, but make sure you fit it with all-wheel drive. I have an all-wheel drive version of this car that I use for online racing and it's an absolute beast but of course the rules of the series dictate that all the vehicles must keep their standard drivetrain so it had to be front wheel drive and it is now our fastest front wheel drive vehicle beating the Volvo 850R which was a 224.378 for those of you wondering that's going to do it for this episode if you did enjoy make sure to smash the like button and until next time, thank you so much for watching and a goodbye.